Steve Hill is so hungry for God. He went to the various moves of God throughout the world and he received the same thing these great men and women of God had. And he went to a church, a single church in Pensacola, Florida, and from all over the world, because the word got out, the power of God was there, four million people came to that one single church. Well, the devil tried to knock him out. He was on his deathbed. He was preparing uh, the funeral arrangements. And a great miracle happened. And he also was given at that time a vision. It was like he could see it happening. And it is what is about ready to happen to planet Earth that he literally feels everyone must understand this vision. I mean, at age 10, his dad starts him drinking beer, alcohol. Uh, by 12, 13, he's, he's into hard drugs, uh, injecting drugs into his veins. He rested 13 times. You know, when I, when I read about myself, I can't believe that that was me. You must feel the same way about yourself. That, well, that's not even you. It's a miracle that all of us are alive, yeah. okay, that we made it through it. But, you know, one of my favorite things to do uh, when I'm in my hometown area when I would witness to like young men and women that are involved in drugs and alcohol, I would take them, of course, if it was a girl, I'd take it with somebody else, to the graves of my dead friends. And the usage of heroin. And this guy right here. And I would talk to him about friends. Carlos. I'd I talk to him about Billy. Years. And I'd say, Billy was 19, well, man. You'll meet a similar fate if you do the same by using those drugs. And I would witness because no one ever believes that it's going to happen to them. No one believes they're ever going to die. The devil to comes to choice. steal, kill, and destroy. But he's patient. He'll take you on a journey. If he can finally get you there and drop you into hell, that's his final goal. And that's the goal he had for my life. He had a total transformation. Uh, and as a result, he had, first of all, there was a key that I noticed. You were mentored by some of the best men of God. Uh, David, David Wilkerson, David Leonard Wilkerson, Ravenhill. David Wilkerson, uh, Leonard Ravenhill are two of the men. My, to, to me, they're my spiritual fathers. And people ask me, you know, they say, why are you, why are you the way you are? Well, we're all, we're all products of who we've been hanging around. And that's why I say, pick your friends carefully, okay? And, and David Wilkerson put me through Bible school, met Leonard Ravenhill, Nikki Cruz, uh, taught us on evangelism. So I was raised around, and of course, Ravenhill was friends with Smith Wigglesworth and A.W. So Tozer. it goes on and on. Oh, the, it, it, it's all connected. But what, uh, another thing I noticed about you, you were hungry for God. Wherever he heard there was a move of God, he was there. I mean, a lot of people say, well, if God wants to do something to me, uh, he'll come to me. Well, he can and will. But I'm so hungry for God, if I hear he's somewhere, I'm out there. I, and that's the way Steve was. See, that's so, it's so non-biblical for people to say, if God's going to move, he's got to come to me. Mm -hmm. Who do we think we are? to say to God that he, he's already come. He doesn't, he's already come down, okay? And he set it up on, on we, we celebrate Christmas Day. He set up the whole pattern. The baby Jesus was there. The shepherds had to come to him. Later on, the wise men had to come to him. And I always tell people, God gave the first altar call. He sets it up to where we got to go to him. And so I have pursued the Lord oh, okay. all my life. Let's take you to Argentina, the revival. You went there. They've been in revival more years than I can even remember. But tell me, when you saw Carlos Anacondia. Well, we lived there for seven years during the peak of the Argentine revival. And it's still moving on. God's still moving. We saw churches go from 500 to 20,000. Mm. Just amazing. Started, my wife and I planted 13 churches, built an orphanage. But Carlos Anaconda, when I got around him, and los que hablan español, también hablo español, <laughs> and those that speak Spanish, I speak Spanish fluent. My wife and I lived there seven years. But Carlos was this insane. And if you're watching Carlos, I'm, that's a respectful word for you, okay? Just, <laughs> he was insane. 
insane for the things of God. And he's a man that owns a nuts and bolts factory. And so anyone that feels like you're common, okay, look at this man. And I went to one of his crusades in a nutshell, brother, because we could talk all day about this man. Went to his crusade, 20, 30,000 people out in an open field, bunch of light bulbs hanging, just naked light bulbs hanging everywhere. No big fanfare, just this man that had authority. Come out! He had authority over darkness. And I would watch him in front of tens of thousands of people. And he would go, In el nombre de Jesucristo de Nazareth, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Teato Satanas, I bind you, Satan. And as far as the eye could see, people were hit by the power, thrown to the ground. People that were walking down the sidewalks, not even paying attention to him, would be thrown to the ground, start shaking under the power. And I saw this and I went, Jesus, whatever this man has, Jesus, Peter's shadow healed the sick. And this is the closest thing I've ever seen to that. I want what he has. And you better get hungry, my friend. If you want to be used of God, you got to have a hunger. you got to have a craving for that. And I got that. Steve went to these various moves of God. I was hungry. I was overwhelmed with what I saw. Uh, obviously, a lot of other people worldwide were overwhelmed. Four million people went to that little church in Pensacola, Florida, because the power of God was there. Tell me about that girl that had cancer. We had a young, and there's so many stories, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I want to talk about this vision that God has just given me because many, you know, you're looking for these peaks in your life. The peak in your life is in front of you, not behind you. Okay, there's more to God than what you have. But the Brownsville Revival, we saw millions of people come through. I preached there for five years, saw four million people come through, but they would come in, in jets. They would come in private jets, they'd come on trains, they'd hitchhike. They came from all over because we had the news, the CNN and all these guys covered it. And so they brought the lost in. But this one little girl, 15 years old, came in. She couldn't have weighed 80 pounds, had a little baseball cap on, dying of cancer. Long story in a nutshell. We did something we never did. We brought her on the platform, okay? Thousands of people there that night, and I just felt of the Lord that we needed to lay hands on her. She was gonna die. She was sent there as a last request. She wanted to go to Brownsville, not Disney. She didn't want to go anywhere else but the, the Brownsville Revival. Laid hands on her two weeks later. This is before internet and all this kind of stuff. I mean, internet was out, but it wasn't just every Facebook and all. Her father sends us a letter. Just did the PET scans, just did all the scans, all the cancer's gone. And now, years later, we just contacted her and she's graduated from university. She's doing fantastic. All the cancer's gone. Now remember, she was given up for dead. And so we've just seen so many miracles. I believe, that's why I love your program. It's supernatural. If you don't believe in the supernatural, you don't believe in Jesus. I want I to like say that, that. again. Do you like if you that? don't believe in the supernatural, you don't believe in Jesus. Now, you see why the devil tried to take him out. And let me tell you, something happened. I, I observed him before he developed cancer. And it, it, was, it was terminal. There's no chance of him surviving. He was preparing for his funeral, making arrangements with his wife. He is literally on his deathbed. And he cries out to Jesus and he says, Jesus, Jesus. if you want to take me, take me. But I, if you leave me here and give me my strength back, I will win a million souls for you. And guess what? God answered his prayer. God gave him a vision for the last days. You better listen to this. I recently had a supernatural visitation from the Lord. I am under mandate to share with everyone. It's, it's tearing me up even as we talk right now because a God, I was in having devotions and I was sitting on my couch. I could take you to the exact place. I was sitting on my couch and the Lord, it was early in the morning. No one else was awake in the house. And I, I closed my eyes and I began to see this color vision come down. It just, a, a vision is just a supernatural experience from God. And, and he began to download this in my spirit. 
and I saw this resort, an incredible the ski resort. And I opened my eyes because it was so real, Sid. And I opened my eyes and it disappeared. So I closed them again and I began to shake because it was like watching a movie. And I looked up and I saw above the ski resort, I saw this mountain of snow. Now I'm a skier and I, I saw this mountain of snow, but it was piled up. It was more than what we needed to ski. And the Lord began to speak to me about the end times, that this mountain of snow is all the false teaching that is falling on the church right now. And if we don't do something about it, if we don't destroy these layers and layers and layers of snow, then it's going to come crashing down on innocent Christians. And in this vision, the the resort was the church. These were people that just came, you know, they came, they paid to be at the resort. We, we give tithes to be at church. Innocent people are going to die if we don't do something about this. I can't believe it's happening in my lifetime. My daughter who was in Bible school, one of the teachers stood up and said to the students, said that once you're a Christian, you are free to do anything you want. You can do anything you want. You're free to sin. You're free to... And so my daughter's sitting out there and he's saying, you're free to jump in bed with your boyfriend. You're free to drink. You're free to do anything you want because the blood covers it all. And then, and that's just, and then the deification of man. That is the worship of man. Look at this world today. You we're putting on pedestals all these ministers and all these politicians. It's a setup for the Antichrist because in the last days, we are going to worship man and we're going to look to him for all the answers. I'm going to tell you right now, Sid, you see it. I see it. It's clear as day. I can't believe other people cannot see what's going on in the world, but we got to get back to something. And what is that? And that is what we've got to do with this avalanche, the spiritual avalanche that could kill millions. We are responsible as leaders, as generals, to destroy and what I saw in the vision I saw helicopters I saw snowmobiles and I saw anti-tank weapons blowing up these mountains and it was as clear as watching a television program snow was crumbling down it was under control because these generals were blowing it up themselves before it blew up and came down and killed people I got on the phone, soaked already with tears. My phone was sticky. And I talked to the Colorado Ski Patrol and I shared with them my vision. And they said, everything you saw, Mr. Hill, is exactly what we do. You saw the Ski Patrol in action. We're trying to save their lives. And he said, I personally man an anti-tank weapon and my shells shoot five miles seven, eight kilometers into the mountains to blow them up. And I'm listening, and this just happened, okay? This is not five, ten, twenty years ago. Then he said this, and I close. He lifted his voice like an evangelist. And he said, could I say something to you, Mr. Hill? And I said, yes, sir. And his voice began to crack like mine is cracking. He said, do you want to know why they die? And I said, yes, why do they die? He said, because they don't listen to me. They refuse to listen. He said, they refuse to listen to me. I tell them, don't go up to that mountain. But they go anyway, they go on their ski their snowmobiles, they go on their helicopters. And he said they're dropped off onto the mountain. And he, and he said an hour later, I'm digging their corpse out of the snow. And I told him, I said, thank you very much. And I said, I do the same thing. I spend my life trying to save lives. And I bought an avalanche probe, which is a long, 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 long pole that you drive into the snow. It's the most wicked device I've ever owned in my life. It's to find dead bodies. 
place to find dead bodies and hopefully maybe find one that's got just an ounce of breath left. A backslider, spiritually speaking. A prodigal, spiritually speaking. But someone who's been covered by all this false teaching. And many of you that are watching this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what you're doing is wrong. You know what you're listening to is wrong. It's feel-good teaching. I am warning you right now, if you are in a church that is allowing you to be free to do anything you want, run for your life. If you're not in a church that is preaching the whole gospel, all the words in red, run for your life. If you've fallen away from the traditional teachings of your Christian life, get back. Get back to what you used to believe in when you were first a child of God. I've been very burdened over this. I didn't have a vision, but many godly men and women are burdened over the, the, I'll call it what it is, what Steve did. It's false teaching that is flooding the airways, flooding Christianity. But I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to turn Steve loose to pray for the same power that was on Jesus, that rose Messiah Jesus from the dead, that rests on him, that's about ready to rest on you. Words. And let me tell you, something happened. I, I observed him before he developed cancer. And it, it, was, it was terminal. There was no chance of him surviving. He was preparing for his funeral, making arrangements with his wife. And God, through a great miracle, spared his life. But the compassion that he has now, he's exuding compassion. And I, I'll tell you, if I have one prayer for myself, and if you have one prayer for yourself, that is to have the compassion of God for a dying society. In addition to that, boy, did this guy have power. I watched him out at Brownsville, and he'd pray for someone, and they would go flying through the air. What well, people that have observed him now says the power is even stronger. We'll get I mean, to that. See, see I got to I gotta jump on that right there, because uh, just two weeks ago, a man came up to me, and I was leaving the church. I was going home. He comes up to me, and he, he stands taller than I am, handsome man, dressed to the max, and, um, I mean, dressed nicer than you are today, and that's hard to do, brother. Right. You're just, <laughs> you know, you need to run your own clothing line, but... Um, <laughs> This guy, he, he, he goes, I said, who are you? And he gave me his name, and I said, what are you here for? He goes, he goes are you, you're Steve Hill. I said, yeah. He goes, I want what you have. And, um, and I said, what do you mean? He goes, I just know who you are, and I want what you have. And, and I've never done this before. I said, let me have your hand. And he put his hand out like that, and I took my hand, and I just w rubbed it across. I've never done this, okay? I've been ministering for 37 years. Went across like that, and when I got to the tip of his fingers... The power of God shot down my arm. You don't have to believe it. That doesn't bother me, okay? It <laughs> shot down my arm, and when my fingers touched his fingertips, it was like a break dancer. His hand went like this. His arm went like this. His shoulders went like And then he went flying backwards, hit the tile. I thought he was going to break the tile or break his neck. And he just laid there staring up like, what on, ha on God's green earth just happened to me? And I'm, I looked at him and I said, get him up, get him up, get him up, pick him up. And then went like this, rubbed his cheek. Never done that before. Just rubbed his cheek. Wham! Hit by the power of God. You want to know what that was? I know, but you tell me. I don't know what it was. Well, it was man. the power. Oh, wait a I don't second. Know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do know what it was. It was the power of the living That's, God. You, you and I both know what I'm talking about. But I don't know what's going to happen with him. What on earth? Because he got like a. a Double, triple, whatever you want to call it. I don't know about oh, the, the, the This anointing can even be transferred through the airwaves like on a cell phone. Tell me what. Oh, come person. on, man. Wait, don't get me started on cell what? phones, what? brother. Because <laughs> we'll get people on cell phones. One man was in the Grand Canyon, okay? I've been to the Grand Canyon. If you're from the other parts of the world, it's a big hole, okay? <laughs> and it's, a, it's seven miles deep. And, and so this man calls from the Grand Canyon and wants me to pray for him. I'm like 3,000 miles away. And... And I said, where are you standing? 
Because if he's on the edge, I don't want to pray for him, you know? Good thinking. <laughs> yeah, he goes, I'm in, I'm he said, I'm in a ranger station. So he's inside, and I've been to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I knew exactly where he was, and I said, okay, okay. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I said, are you ready? Are he you goes, ready? yeah. And I said, I went, fire! 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 Power of God! Touch him! Hit him! Hello? Hello? <laughs> His wife came up to me two hours later. He was out, man. He was still out. And uh, she said, yeah. said the power. She said, the power of God hit my husband. He's shaken under the power thousands of miles away. Why not? If Je Jesus is omnipresent, if you're in Siberia right now, he's in Siberia. Wherever you're watching this from, he's there with you. I want you to look in the camera and pray for the people watching right now to receive the power. Same day, that same type of power that fellow on the cell phone received. There's no doubt in my mind that you are about to receive. If you are hungry for the things of God, then God's hungry for you. If you're serious about Him, He's serious about you. And I want you to look at me right now. Sir, ma'am, what do you want to see? Now, if you want me to pray for you that you get a million dollars in the mail, I'm sorry. You're looking at the wrong person. But if you want to pray for the anointing, the power of God, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, dead, to see the power of God come down in your city, to see people touched by the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray God for the power of God to come down right now into that living room, into that house, into that home, flow through that computer, flow through that TV set, flow through that apparatus right now. Touch, 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 touch. May the fire of the Holy Ghost envelop, envelop, and touch Touch this man, touch this woman, and use them for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. And don't you take a drop of God's glory. When he uses you, you give all the credit to the Lord. That's one of the secrets of my longevity. I see miracle after miracle after miracle because I don't take one drop of his glory. It's all Jesus and none of you. You're a vessel. Man, if, you, if it wasn't for God, you couldn't heal a sick hummingbird. It's Jesus flowing through you. <laughs> right now, there's somebody. Let me tell you right now. Right now, there's somebody in a cloud. You are in a dark cloud, and God's going to bring you out of that dark cloud. But once you get out, here's what the Lord is saying to you. Move. Keep moving. The Lord is saying to you, I cannot steer a car that is sitting still. You need to move forward in the things of God. Quit sitting still. Go after God. Worship the Lord. Read the word, not for others, but for you.